All right. If you agree with me on this panel, seek professional help immediately. <laughs> we are now moving on into combat and strategy. We're still talking about miniature, uh, battle maps and miniatures versus theater of the mind. We're talking combat and strategy, and we're going to start with Mr. Max Boival on this one. <laughs> How do battle maps and miniatures impact the strategic elements of combat? And you can't say refer to the end of the previous video. No, like the a big impact that battle map have and, and miniature and stuff like that, or VTT, I guess, could be lumped into that, I guess, right? Just like because that's what they're trying to emulate. It's it's gonna take the player into a tactical mind. Player will think about combat in a different manner. Now, like they're gonna be a little more outside of the character and they're gonna look at the map, they're gonna become all become like perfect fucking tactician. Or oh, sorry, mm -hmm. sorry, I'm sorry again. I'm trying to I, I tried I said that I won't. Anyway, they're all gonna become like perfect tactician and uh, try to move their character in the optimal spot all the time, and right, it's like so you're gonna have to deal with that. And if it's something that you enjoy, then that's fine. It does slow down combat, uh, in, in my experience, and it does lead to a lot of like out of character talk, which I don't prefer. But uh, this is something, yeah. That this, for me, this is the big thing. Like, it changed the way that people think about the the the, the way that people approach the combat. Can you share an example of when a battle map miniatures, whatever, influenced the outcome in a way that you were describing? Basically, changed the way people would play because the battle map and miniatures were used vice theater of the mind. Yeah, well, like it's like the like what you said about the fireball and stuff like that, and people positioning, right? We see that all the time, right? Now, like people turns take longer, and people like take their time to oh move there so I can like and then point on the map, right? You wouldn't you wouldn't be able to do that on on a, on a if you do theater of the mind, right? You could say like move closer to the door, move closer to the wall, clear the room, right? It changed the way you interact with the because you're gonna just point oh move uh, in this square here. So I can clasp my fur ball and catch catch all those guys, right? This is an example of like the with magics. Magic's the worst for that. <laughs> for the impact. But even like with the flanking rules, now you have all those things, right? And also another thing that I would say, it can limit what people do because if you wanna, you know, the example that people always use, like, oh, jump on the table, grab the chandelier, and swing across the room, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a cliche example. That's why I'm using it that yeah, right. But yeah, like, that makes sense. You see that less with the miniature, because well, do you have? Did you did you put a table there? Like, is the table like it just just drawn on the map that you cannot flip it? So now people don't think about doing it. Is there no because you all see from top down, right? That you the chandelier is not depicted, so it doesn't exist in the mind of play, player because they only look at the map, right? This is the kind of thing that influence uh, that the battle map change the way that people visualize combat and interact with it so you'd say it turns into a tactical uh tactical uh combat instead of a role-playing combat yep okay all right connell so being on the pro battle map side how do battle maps and miniatures impact the strategic elements of combat the players get to see what's coming at them we've been using battle maps from egyptian era time I mean, we there's a lot of games that kids play uh, today. Uh, just name the two big ones: chess and checkers that use a battle map. It might not feel it's not role playing, but still a battle map. They're moving their pieces to where they think will have the best result. Um, so having the, keeping that in mind, they're already slightly doing that if they're playing other board games. I'm not saying D and D is a board game or Pathfinder is a board game, but to a certain degree, with a battle map, it's a board game. I'll give you, I'll, 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 I'll give it that. But it gives them an aspect to learn a special, uh, a special awareness. I cannot cast fireball over there because two of my teammates are over there because they didn't talk to me before they start moving. Or the guys on the other side of the situation have moved. So a spell or whatever no longer works. I'm going to run up and swing at this guy. Well, if you do this all theater of the mind, and uh, uh, theater of mind, it might work out better. I don't know. But if 
the character moves before that player's next turn, and they have to re-ingest of what they're doing. We're already doing aspects in real life that works on that tool. Now, problem solving. So if I use miniatures to help them problem solve as I'm doing we're, uh, doing our uh, whatever system I'm running, I will, I will continue doing that because I like to see the which way that they're thinking. And I think that that's where the miniatures, battle maps, uh, uh, whatever you put on a table will help the person, you know, think a little bit more than I run over there. Well, how far away am I from the bad guy? I don't know. How far are you? Well, this is a theory of mine. I cannot put A. I don't know how far A is away from B. I don't know. I call that a feature, not a bug, but okay. <laughs> um, uh, what strategies do you use to ensure that the use of miniatures actually adds depth to combat encounters? I will make sure that if I'm throwing the monster on the, that particular field, I actually have the create monster or thing for that field. Uh, using our proxies does not help anything. If you want to use a proxy to go play Magic the fucking Gathering. See, now I, I finally cussed. I'm sorry. Um, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Give it time. But uh, I like to actually use what I'm saying they're up against. Uh, it being a bridge. I will find a way to have a bridge over water so they cross it. So it enriches, not so much enrich, uh, enriches the imagination, but you're they see what you're selling, and I think it makes for a better game. So okay, so this uh, this message is kind of going nowhere, but I'm going to say it anyway for the record. Uh, Streamyard is not connecting to my Rumble account right now. I keep getting errors. So the folks on Rumble who are sending messages, uh, you're right, it's not working. I can't make it work. It keeps erroring out on me. So, um, all right, Bear. Mm -hmm. How do battle maps and miniatures impact the strategic elements of combat? Uh, negatively and positively. It is a double-edged sword. <sighs> Mr. Max's fireball example earlier. Living on the edge of the fireball. I'm sorry, that was yours. Living yeah, on yeah. The edge of the fireball. either way. But I have a friend who plays a rogue in 5e and annoys the living shit out of me because he's mastered how to use that character on a tactical map and and he can bip boppity boop all around the map every time he moves because he uses the rules to his advantage that specifically relate to the tactical mapping or the wizard who when they were in the grotto of the um the um the galfalus tree in uh some citadel quietly moved his way all around the map until he was in line to take out as many villains and bad guys as possible with a single lightning bolt that went straight down the line on them. Things like that work. Same time, earlier adventure, players have all glumped up and one of the players goes, ah, crap, guys, we're in perfect fireball condition here. And I was like, hey, you are, but lightning bolt <laughs> went through all of them. You know what I mean? So it can, it can really present a clear tactical assessment of the situation. It can reduce chaos. Uh, it gives everybody an instantaneous understanding of where they are and what's going on. Uh, the rules in some games certainly help that. Now, I wouldn't do it in Call of Cthulhu. I wouldn't do it in Chill. Um, I wouldn't do it in a lot of games. But Max said earlier, you know, spells really mess everything up. Well, that's the truth of any fantasy game. Spells are the biggest pain in the ass in every fantasy game ever made because they are game breakers. They are reality changers. So if you're going to have something that can change reality, the benefit of the map, the benefit of the tactical stuff is that those reality changes have specific rules attached to them, and the map allows you to see clearly how those rules engage. <laughs> How, how do you prevent the map and miniatures from overshadowing narrative during combat? And there's your problem right there. It It is hard to prevent it from overshadowing. So you've got to do more role playing. You got to do more description. You got to break up the action. You got to take, you know, villain, uh, you know, monologue rounds and stuff like that. You got to do all these other little tricks and tips to keep them still focused on the role playing aspect, not just the role R O L L playing aspect of it. Now, it's funny, like, I don't disagree with the bit of kiddo that, you know, this stuff can enhance a game if you blend the two together. But that's how I am. I'm always talking about blending the two together. In Heroic, I presented literally 
two systems for you. One that uses tactical mapping and one that uses vagary and theater of the mind ranges, you know, oh, they're shooting distance, they're striking distance, oh, they're beyond visual distance. So that way you can have still an experience, rules can be applied, but you can do it in your head. But if you're using the tactical stuff, be prepared. Characters are going to count, players are going to count squares. That's just the way it is. It, it encourages them to do so. Not a, It's not a fault. It's not a bug. It's a feature. But like anything, as someone once said to me, a flaw is just a virtue overworked. And if you overuse it, you're going to get the flaws of it. If you use it like a spice, you're going to get a great time. Yeah, the only the only comment comment I'm going to make on on this is that uh, you're playing a role playing game, so there are two sides to this: role playing and game. And I understand that this game aspect. That's why we have dice. That's why we have rules. But role playing is part of the game, and role playing is interaction. Role, whether that's interacting with the elements, with it, whether it's interacting with other characters, whatever. Role playing isn't sitting back playing her, um, hero quest. And pretending, well, my character's dumb, so I'm going to do this. Uh, like your role play, you're, it's not role playing. It's not take. Is it's not playing battle tech and being like, well, my pilot would would think this weird thing at this one point, you know, and calling that role playing. Role playing is being immersed. It is fully from the moment you sit down, you're playing that character to the moment you stop playing that session. It's being in the headspace of that character completely. And what battle maps do is characters should react in combat organically to the situation around them, not based on the most optimum number presented on a battle map. It ha I wouldn't say half them, but there are a lot of times when characters don't, don't perform the way a normal person would. So, well, the number, I get a plus two if I do this weird thing for some stupid reason, even though it doesn't make sense. So I'm doing that. Why would I not take the plus two and keep doing the thing I've been doing without the bonus? because the thing that you've been doing without the bonus is what your character's focused on is what makes more sense. Why well, I love the earth on changing action penalty. Uh, it, it's, it's about organic play. You should be playing organically to the character, not tactically to the map. And that's the problem with the maps. And then the last thing I'm going to say, and then Con, uh, Connell, absolutely, you'll have your time. So I'm going to bring this up now because I think this is relevant to what I'm saying. Is with battle maps and miniatures, players forget they can slide across the table. They forget they can pick up the static chair on the map and hit someone with it. They count spaces around the table instead. And this is generally, not, not universally, but generally true. Yep. And if you uh, if you see that as a GM and you're using battle map still, right, your NPC can do those things as well. Do that and it's gonna remind remind the other players that they, you know, yep. the furniture can still be used as, you know, for different things, right? You can use a table to as cover, you you know, or whatever, right? Just like if the player don't do it because they're just counting space, I have the NPC do it. Yeah, the, the bad guy or the mother. Well, well, uh... I, I do want to take exception with something you said, though, Max. Should be, should, should, should. No, yep. you prefer. No, is should. I, I no, don't no, care. I'm not playing that game. I'm not playing that game. It should. There is I'm a right saying. way to play role-playing games, and I don't care about your opinion. About No, there is. Yes, there is. There is absolutely a right way to play role-playing games. Sir, and I will disagree with you this on the Great. Way. You disagree, but that's not our topic for tonight. We can no, do that later. There is something, because we're talking about the benefit of battles and, and things like that, and you're saying you should be doing all these things yep. that you feel a battle map disrupts. Yep. Therefore, it is on topic. It is not off topic. But again, you're imposing your view of how a game should be played on other people. Not everyone has to agree with you, and you don't have to agree with everyone. I understand else. that completely, but you don't have to bring it up every time. I'm going to say should every single time. I don't have to say in my opinion. I don't have to say in my okay. game. People understand what opinions are. <laughs> yeah, they don't. And nothing has improved that to you. Pay attention to the media. People do not understand what opinions are. But that's okay. I understand. I'm just saying I disagree with what you're saying. That's and. That's good. We don't want everybody to be in an echo chamber here, but I'm not going to be uh, uh, in this mindset. No, that's for you. I don't need to say that. That's just implied. Everybody should know that opinions imply that. So, uh, Connell, you wanted to say something a while ago. You said Earth Dawn drink. I mean, if that's still a thing. <laughs> Touche, sir. No, uh, but you're on the battle map side, so what do you have to say for the folks that... Uh... I was the guy who ran across the table, grabbed the stack chair in Pathfinder and threw it at something because I knew how the feet tree worked in Pathfinder where I can do stupid shit. 
uh, know your character. It's not so much uh, what you can or cannot do. Just know your fuck. Uh, know your character. Uh, if you have a feat or the uh, rule say you can get away with this, then do it. Run across the table, grab the chair, throw it at somebody, uh, beat somebody with a frying pan. As long as the rules of the game allows it, why not? It doesn't have to be a mentor versus. Wait, 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 wait. So, so that's the rules of the game allow it? I have to look up the fact that it says I can pick up a chair and throw it? There's this certain rules. This is, role, this is role playing. There is no rule. <laughs> certain rules are more tight knit than others. I mean, it's just that the system if that you're running. Or, if, you, if you go if you go in those system like what what they said like you cannot interact with like you cannot pick up a chair and throw it at someone if there's not a move for it like now you're moving away from the role playing stuff well, like, no no really, like, I, you have button press I'm playing chance I am playing one of my characters from Pathfinder I know I have a feat that says uh, use anything and I don't get a negative uh, a negative roll oh okay as long as I know my character's able to do this and I'm going to do it. Even if my character wasn't able to do it because I don't I'll get a, min- a negative to roll, so freaking what? I'm still going to do it. It depends on the player and how a strict a D- a DM storyteller, referee, whatever it is, it, and how relaxed he is but, also. You have to put some of this onto also, the DM, not the player, also, but the DM. Just the fact that there's a feed that says you can do that without a penalty, mean that you can do it if you don't have the feet. You just have a penalty for it. Yeah. Right, yeah, you can still it do it. You just don't lie, do it right? damage. That was one yeah. of my issues with Pathfinder, especially the first edition with all the bonuses in there, where it's like, and I, you guys have heard me say this a lot, like, well, I, you know, I don't have, I only have a plus two. Remember, plus two means bonus, means you're better at it than the average bear. But I only have plus two, I can't do it. What kind of game gives you a plus two and then you can't do something? Like, that doesn't I, make any sense. I this was years ago. I'm in somebody. I'm in Ron Bruce's campaign. I have the ability because of the way I built my character uh, to throw anything I want. So I throw great swords. Well, another person at the table. Well, I think he should have to roll a d10. I'm like, why? He's like, to make sure you actually hitting them with the blade, not the pommel. I'm like, stop shitting on my foot. I'm playing the game that I, you know, playing. It. Even the DM Bruce agreed with me that you know I'm having fun what you do with miniatures and what you do with theater in mind at the end of the day if you're not having fun don't freaking do it find another way to play the game that you want to play yep that's that's a good point actually (laughs) yeah no i i actually i i agree with that might surprise you but i do agree with that um let me there's a couple comments here that i want to address i did that up did i not start Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Oh, here it is. Uh, as long as you're playing games based on numbers, spell radius, uh, etc., in rules writing, making use of the value of those numbers in a game will always be important to much of the player base. Those are bad players. They are forgetting the role playing side of it and only taking the game side of it. There is both. I don't actually agree with Mr. Max and the pure 4D concept. Now, to be fair, they do roll dice more than I make it sound like they do because I think that dice are important in the game. You should be reacting as the character reacts, not as the mathematics of the rules of the game indicate at that one moment in time what would be best. It, role role playing is a thing. Role playing's been around for many, as Connell said about board games or, or war games, they've been around for a long time. Diplomats have used uh, role playing. Kings and queens and generals and marshals have used role playing. Uh, uh, the kids have used role playing. Cops and robbers. I want to be the knight. I'm going to be the knight templar. You know, uh, it's it's all happened. The rules codify that to some degree, but no player should be standing here and saying, like, mm, let me see. So I think that by Pythagorean's theorem that it's going to land right there. And mm, so you're you're safe. You're safe. No, it's a lot of that is a guessing game. Or you just say, hey, like we did in the military, uh, have a six meter spacing between each person. So if a grenade is thrown, it should only kill one. Should. And you don't want to be the person at that six meter mark. <laughs> He is still away because you're going to get injured. How injured? Eh, you could you could actually be killed. It's all a crapshoot. That's what saving throws are for. That's why I despise the idea. Well, fireball's thirty feet. I'm thirty feet six inches away. I'm safe. No, 
they don't tell no, you, you like the nobody dice, has uh, that capability what's how up many dice of damage. they don't tell you how many dice of damage the grenade does in the military <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the military doesn't tell someone. Uh, tell us the destructor. Six meter away. Are you gonna take one d twelve damage, guys? <laughs> what, what it was, and I don't know if the military's changed it. When I was in, it was just the idea that uh, the damage potential of it, if it lands at the feet of one person here at six meters either side, the killing potential of it has been lessened by a lot. Doesn't mean it can't kill. Yeah, and you know, uh, you sets of dice. He got piercing dice, and he got force dice from the grenade. Oh, there you go. Exactly. Like that, the, that, sure. <laughs> the like th there's a spectrum, right? In role playing game, and I'm probably like closer to the end, like like the role playing end, right? Where that's what we focus on. Some people are being more like toward the tactical or board game end, you could say, right? Just like, and there's some point when you go so far that you might as well be better served by playing a different type of game. Something you know, some people like. Sometimes that's okay. A question you should ask yourself as well, right? Like even like somebody would go further into the role play than I am, and then at some point Evan S could say, "Well, maybe you should just do improv theater, right? <laughs> just go fucking do that. I hate it." But you know, there's a there's an ex there's extreme on both sides, and some people say like, you know, there's other games that you know, like yeah, you maybe you want to play like a skirmish game, maybe you want to play like and, a... and so, so that is a perfect thing. Connell's heard me say this before, and you said it now. This is why one of the things I really respect about Bruce Lombardo. And and because you know he and I have this <laughs> this back and forth a lot too. Yes, he wants to play a skirmish game. Do it. And I would say, Connell, you've been in his games for a long time. He runs a skirmish game. Yeah. He doesn't run a role playing game. But and then but but then but then also like once you make this realization, you have to understand like well all the rules that I'm all is the game that I'm playing here is the rule set I'm using here the best suited for the job right and then you have to consider. Mm -hmm. That as well, right? There's some game that are not even role playing game that are not suited to the type of play that we want to do, and you know you don't you don't gonna go, don't go try and play like a the total party skill system, right? If you want a skirmish game, you gonna you gonna fucking get bored or like playing like Dungeon World if you want to do like the the skirmish game, right? Just like there's a well, although yeah, like but Dungeon World is only player facing dice, and that's really annoying. <laughs> yeah. I just want to point out that uh, Mr. Mac did say he's on the spectrum. I'm uh, just making sure no one else missed that. Um, okay. And and some of the what folks are putting in chat. I look. I get what uh, what you guys are saying. I'm trying to add some energy to the show. Number one, I've, I've mentioned it at the beginning. I've mentioned it for years. I'll mention it again. I use battle maps in a hybrid. Uh, I'll use a whiteboard. I've actually got I've got vinyl hex maps that go back 35 years or whatever that I've used that I drawn. Just don't ask me how how wide well how wide is one of those are one of those hexes. I don't know it's like 10 20 yards who cares? Like I I'm not going to give you that specificity. You're never that's, that's going to get it from where, me. What's that? Also what we're going to talk about second segment tree. What? What's a thing in a tree? Isn't that like what, we, what we're going to talk about in segment three? Oh no, no, I'm I'm just putting it out there for folks. Like I'm I I do use like there is a place for these things. So, um, but what's next is actually Connell answering a question. Actually, no, what's next is me telling people, uh, go do this. A little, little advertisement here is a charity we support is the Wounded Warrior Project, a national nonpartisan organization whose mission is to honor and empower wounded warriors. Please refer. Two, the video's description for linked where you can make your hopefully tax deductible donation. We will be doing a 24 hour live stream on Veterans Day. If you're watching this after the fact, it's already passed. Sorry, but a 24 hour live stream in support of the Wounded Warrior Project. All right, Connell, you ready? Breathe in, breathe out. How do you maintain? Now, I know this question isn't really for you, but let's, let's go with it. How do you maintain strategic depth in combat using theater of the mind? After each round, <clears throat> I can I'll point out how uh, much damage the guy or per thing is taken, or how much. Uh, now that is now that you guys have a small breather, uh, you start to notice that the wounds that you are, are adding up. But just dialing into what just happened uh, the round before, if it's needed. Um, 
I don't think there's any great answer for this one, at least not that I could think of, because I've read the question a couple times. Well, yeah, I get it. And you're not the theater of the mind person. It's just we do try to we do try right, to no, make I the people it. that are on one side even think about the other side a little bit. So yeah, I get theory crafted, but I have no real you know hands on experience with this. So other than explain uh, midway through that you know Timmy is beat up or whatever, or the cave because of the last fireball is starting to shake a little bit more and gravel or well, here's the thing. I don't want to give you. But since it isn't your forte and you really don't do this, if you're good, I can move on to Bear and then we'll just please jump you do. in with the commentary. Please, okay. Please okay. Do. All right. Bear, how do you maintain strategic depth in combat using theater of the mind? And I need to know this secret because I'm in your game and I don't know if I've ever had strategic. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Description and letting the players ask questions. <clears throat> wait, wait, wait. I, I, oh, shit. Yeah. Did you just trigger Mr. Max? <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, the only D in my game is the one between my legs. Uh, the <laughs> point of the game for me is to have the players ask questions, and then I will answer those questions because I want to see how their minds are thinking. I want to see what they're looking for. I'm not going to just volunteer a shit ton of information that they're not interested in because I've played enough games to see them glaze over and know that they only care about what they care about. So they will ask what they ask. And if they don't ask the right questions to get certain information that can bite them on the ass in the middle of the fight, they're going to get bit on the ass. And that's going to be an interesting thing to see, see it play out. So they will determine their tactical involvement through the way they engage with me as the information source for the make-believe world we're playing in. Uh, just so folks know, because there's been a few comments on this. Bear and I are good. He gives me crap about this all the time. Oh it's God, all we're okay. fine. We're it's all okay. Yeah. This is our friends people. talk. <laughs> so, uh, so, <laughs> uh, Bear. Yeah. What do we how, want, Kamala? <laughs> how do you handle player disagreements about positioning or actions when everything is based on description? This actually happened in your game. In all my games, I have a simple rule, which is you could at any point in time ask, set the scene. You can literally, hey, what are you doing, Max? Uh, set the scene. And then I will have to describe what's going on, where everybody is, to give you a refresher of the visual. It's as simple as that. What the fuck are people thinking? I'm sorry, I'm seeing all this chat about us. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's all good, man. Uh, I hate this fucking prick. What are you talking about? Come on. He should be buried in a ditch. Anyway, back to you. You oh, pointed at Connor. You pointed at Connor. I did point, point up. Con I did point up. Yeah. <laughs> um, you must know well, my so, so let, let me give an example before we, we move on. And this isn't in your game because I, the one incident that happened in your game, I don't even remember. It was so minor, I didn't give a crap. But when GM's alcove, which I think is a great descriptive GM, who would probably be on Connell's side, at least he could easily take Connell's side because he does the VTTs and he's a Pathfinder game runner and all of those little nuances and war game. He thinks, guess what? He's a war game. All of this. But he's also really amazing at describing scenarios and rooms and setting scenes and so forth. But there was when I first started playing with him, I had a character that had a sap. Yeah. And I kept saying I dropped the sap or, the, or maybe it's a sword. No, I think it's I dropped the sword and I used the sap or something or whatever. And it kept being in my hand. He's like, okay, so use your sword to attack. I'm like, no, but he's the game master. He may have made a mistake. I don't care at this point. No big deal. Whatever. Let's move on. So I didn't argue with him. Then the second time it happened and I'm like, is he not hearing me when I'm saying that I'm sheathing the sword or dropping the sap or whatever it is? Whatever. I'm uh, basically just kind of playing as a lark right now. Anyway, let's just go on. The third time, it's like, okay, dude, I don't know if this thing is cursed or not, but I keep trying to drop this, and you keep telling me it's in my hand. He's like, oh, oh no, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. My thing is I'm not going to fight with the Game Master unless it is really, really important. For example, no, you don't understand. I must knock out this person, not stab him. I have to use my sap. And I told you four times that it's in my hand already, so I shouldn't have to take the action. Remember, Pathfinder's all actions to, to draw it or, or you know get it on my backpack or whatever the hell is going on. Only then would I argue as the player. From then, it's not that big of a deal. If I had my positioning wrong, I treated it as a fog of war. I treat it as like, crap, I was mistaken. I thought I was underneath the dragon, but, you know, its head moves so big, I'm no longer underneath it. Whatever it happens to be. I think a lot of times players need to not fight with the game master, but as 
as Bear said, also ask the game master to set the steam. Some will say no to that, uh, but but uh, but ask the game master to set the scene to make sure that what you're envisioning is right. There's I don't think there's anything wrong with clarification. I don't either. Oh. I don't think there's anything wrong with players asking questions. I don't think there's anything wrong with not being in character every bloody moment you're at the table. I have no problem with those things, but that's how I feel. And also I outside, of, between session two, you stay in character <laughs> for the whole campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Seriously, my life is method acting. Go fuck. Well, they, you know, <laughs> he actually does one one time in character even when the game is done. Yep. That's All right, insane. Mr. Max Bivance, let's bring up the question for you. How do you maintain strategic depth? in combat using theater of the mind the big thing for me is to make the environment interactable you know you, you want to have stuff that people can uh, interact with you want to have the scene that change right and this when you have your turn as a gm right oh now like the this the, like the lava flows and expand right and there's a bubble like other oh, swamp is you know make something happen that change the scene have stuff in the room like don't have your fight in empty 20 by 20 feet room right just like have stuff feeling the room and happening six and paces like by six paces sir i'm not giving you 20 feet yeah and uh <laughs> i'm gonna swing my great sword in there <laughs> <laughs> the and uh and and also like for like for me like, you know like the the thing when we say like don't ask question to uh the gm right for me that also help with the interactivity of the scene because like it's it's like we said like the like i said like if you want to have information about the world just tell me what the character does to get that information and then i'll give it to you so you still get the same information but now it's true action of the character so then it forced your character to act it forced you to you know yeah you're using your turn to get this inform information but this is something you want to do in combat sometime and this is also the tactical stuff. Like, you know, like I gave the example earlier, like if you don't know how many guys are still standing and you want to take your turn, maybe it's just gonna be that, like peeking above like the, the your cover to con the guy, the remaining guy, right? But now you have a tactical choice to make. Do I really need to know at the moment? Or do I are I gonna take my turn to do something else, right? It adds like this depth, like you know, this limitation breed something else, right? It breed like some kind of creativity that you have to interact, like you have to be creative in your in your encounter. And one thing also that we one rule that we often say for the turns, right? Like it's like a it's not a hard and fast rule, like, but it's like a guideline more. Like you say, like in your turn, say where your character is. Say what your character does. Say what your character say. Right. That's actually because, one of the things that you guys came up with that I really do like. Yeah. So then, so then, like, if you just say that, there's like a few things that happen. First, you see your cat where your character is, so there's no confusion. Mm -hmm. You see what your character does, so it incites you to make action. But also, like, just the fact that saying a return where your character is, and you don't have to do it every every turn, but it's a good guideline. If you want to do it. At some point, you're gonna get tired of saying the same thing all the time. So you're gonna have your character move, right? It push you to be more active, to be more like, to be more like mobile. Like so, you don't spend like round after round just standing in front of the of the other guy, like swinging your sword, right? Move around, like, and describe your action. So those are things like, just those little rules. It just put you in a different mindset that for that kind of encourage you to interact with the environment and be more. Tactical in a sense, in a different sense, right? You want you want to because you don't want to say, Well, I swing my sword at the guy. Well, I try to hit and you know, I'm standing in front of this guy and I hit, right? Just like at some point you get bored of that. Mm. Says you. So as you answered actually one of the follow-up questions, so I'll ask you a different one. Um <laughs> how do you ensure that players fully understand the battlefield and their options without visual aids? The that's that's where also would come with the the freedom that we give right with the the visualization right i describe what the scene was i describe you know what the context is we know what the setting is right so the little detail like you know there's oh you're in a room there's some in it's a warehouse there's some pillar that hold the roof there's some boxes the exact place of them it doesn't matter until you interact with them then once you once you do, then the place become fixed. You know, there's 
or the box just scattered in the middle or they're around the pillars. Maybe I didn't say it doesn't matter until it does. And then that's what it becomes, right? You got know what I mean? I, no, I got, I got you. It's just the way you said it doesn't matter. Well, until it does. <laughs> until it does. I, and then, I, I and, that, it. and then when it does, it gets specified. And then that's what it is for the rest of the scene. Now, everybody like update. And if somebody like didn't pick up on the on the queue at the moment, well, there's a mm -hmm. bit of confusion. But then again, it's fog of war. You misunderstand yeah. something or like, or, or maybe, or maybe like, oh, you thought the box were in the middle, but then somebody like made them close to the pillar. But then maybe there's some in each location, and you know, it doesn't matter too much. Don't okay. sweat the little stuff. Keep for me like keeping keeping the flow going. Keep your turn short. That's a big but that's again important important as well because otherwise people check out. Keep your turn short. If everybody does that, you're gonna have more turn, right? Your turn is gonna come back sooner. But what if I need to look in my book to find out exactly what the most important attack that I can do right now is with the best numbers, and I need to make sure that this feed is synergized with this other feed in order to know that everything is going to come together in the most perfect form. How am I supposed to do that? I have to look this stuff up. Then your character is just going to be frozen place while other people do stuff because you're just like dazing off and thinking about what you're going to do and like you have analysis paralysis. There you go. We're going to skip you. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, you guys got anything you want to add to it? Go ahead, Connell. I'm just trying. I'm, I'm going, I'm listening to what uh, Mr. Max has to say. In the back of my head, I'm picturing I'm at Mount Doom. I'm stabbing Sam because it didn't stop bitching about the freaking pony for so damn long. But instead of <laughs> trying to push him off the edge, I accidentally try to fall uh, off the edge, but I can't because I don't know where the edge is because it's now lined up with those bumper things that you put at the bowling alley so every kid makes sure he gets hits a pin no a, a physical map lays out lines of no you cannot go this direction or that direction it's something bad going to happen but this is just me having a weird moment and i'll let things go yeah bear go ahead and this is this is open time you guys can talk all you want what are you talking about I, I think he was just trying. Honestly, I think he was just trying to jump in. I, I just don't get no, it. No, no, there was a point. It just got lost between brain and mouth. I, I, I... <laughs> oh, no, actually. If you only you could draw a picture about it, right? Uh, Pur Pur draw, take a map and make your point on it. Listen, I love Pur to tears, but Connell could have said blue banana red monkey 12, and Pur would have gone, that's a very good point. Connell, because Pur is <laughs> like king. Support He's people. king positivity. Yes, he is. He, is. he really is. <laughs> no, but Connell. Hey, GM, how close is Frodo to the edge of the ledge? But I can't ask oh, questions. That. No questions. Don't, questions. Ask, don't ask the Dean questions. I, I just... No, like it would, it, it, with me, you cannot ask questions. Oh, yeah, no, no. Your, your fucking weirdness is but... beyond me. <laughs> but now I understand why Connell's statement made no sense to me because we were in the world of 4D. Yeah, exactly. I'm no, going no, to the like, theater of the mind of my character dying because I don't know where the wall is or, or the uh, edge of the cliff is. Uh, and I'm done. Here's my character. Here's but my in 4D, character. what you would have said instead is this. You would have said, well... Bear, you're only 3D. Don't, don't, don't elevate yourself. Shh, shh. <laughs> I will transcend before your eyes. <laughs> That's going to be beautiful. It's, it's my turn. <laughs> it's... Well, given that Frodo is close to the edge of the lip, I'm going to tackle him and throw him off the edge and the 4d rules apply that i'm right so yeah. not confusing can you move Carl. that many squares sir there are no squares there's only zool if it, it you know you drink something <laughs> i'm wrong oh apparently i'm wrong sorry no, no, apparently no, i'm wrong no. i know nothing i'll shut the fuck up you're you're if you're doing something cool right and it wasn't specify like you know it's still it's still up for grab like the 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 resolution has been raised to how close the, the edge is and now you went direct with it you get to define it right you want to tackle the guy off the edge of the ledge that's fine he's gonna have like a role to resist or whatever right he's just gonna be like free death he's a hobby he has no role to resist it's foot to ass off the cliff he goes well, you can dodge like or kicking, stuff like that, like right? like kicking a, uh, a chihuahua. I don't recommend it, but they don't have no yeah. uh, enough weight to argue with you. Yeah, but you got to hit you, first, you and they, they might move out of the way. <laughs> but there's, a, there's no... There's no... Yeah, exactly. You can move out of the way. You can dodge and stuff like that. Or if he's like, like knocked down on the ground, right, and dying, well, then, you know, there's all 
set of uh, circumstances that led to that situation. Like there's a build up. Things don't exist in a vacuum, right? Things get defined as we go and things gets, you know, so we know something about the world. If I said like in the description, right, it's a long, the cliff is a, is a long way away, but you can feel the heat from the lava down there, right? It's a different story. Then you want to, you, you can say, I, I, I'll try to tackle him. I say, well, you can grab him and bring him closer, but then you're not going to make it that round, right? And then you get a turn to go, right? There's way you can do the stuff you can say. Um, See, you I'm already right, triggered his ED and he just said, screwed him out. I, I literally <laughs> thought I understood, but apparently I'm wrong. So I understand nothing. <laughs> John Snow, I understand nothing. No, no, to, to be fair, uh, so... I'm going to move this along now. We're going to get ready to go into the next segment after I read some chat. A um, couple things. First of all, um, thank you, Bear, because ch ever since we had the little <laughs> back and forth, chat's been moving. It's been great. So uh, so there you go. We got people kind of interested in what's going on a little bit more. But no, I really, really, really f need to explain this to folks who are watching. The disagreements are actually good. Mm -hmm. Whether it's disagreements on the panel or you guys disagreeing in chat, just make sure that your disagreements don't turn into personal attacks. That's it. That, that's well, I disagree. See, disagreements aren't good. Ah, ha, ha, you know what? Catch twenty two. I just five D <laughs> your ass. You five you five D role playing. You found it. Disagreements, Max. Yes. The, the, something I want to address in chat, like uh, Walter MC said, theater of the mind only ever has to make as much sense as Hollywood movie, right? Where's that? And I think. Oh, here we go. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. I think that's a good comment. I think I think that's true. I think that you know if you if you pay attention to a movie, right, and you really like try to decortic it, like there's all there's all kind of thing that don't really make sense, right? You the people are on chase and there's the bridge and then it cuts and then it cuts and then it cuts and they're still heading toward the bridge, right? If you push it too much, it becomes stupid. And sometimes like some people do comedy with that, but you're trying to tell a story. You're trying to you're trying to create drama. You're trying to create tension and stuff like that. So you can break. I bit the rules and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in the end. Like it's not well if like we don't the... have rules then you don't have a game. Right. And I would like to address Table Crispy's <laughs> oh, uh, Jesus. Table Crispy's response. He says we don't let players move around NPCs that have already been established in the scene. But from my understanding of what Connell was saying, the scene had been established. Yeah. Frodo was close to the edge. I was reacting based on that description. No, of course not. No one's allowed to move people. That's just wrong. That's wrong in any deal. Well, you, you, like hey, your quantum character... person, man. The, the player cannot move the NPC. The character can move the NPC. Well, they right? can try to move the NPC. No, but yeah, exactly. He's saying, he's saying yeah. quantum movement. Yeah. And I agree with him. Yeah, yeah. But I was basing it on Connell's description of what he said he was yeah, doing. Yeah, it's a fixed scene. Frodo's at the edge. He's yeah. about ready to throw. Yeah. Sam's like, ah, so you punch Sam. So I wasn't wrong. Oh. So, so, so the part that, that I would not disagree with what you guys are saying, but I would disagree with with battle maps and so forth is I don't like the concept that, oh, well, you can only move six squares and he's seven squares away and he's at the edge there. So you'll be right next to him when you're done, but then uh, it'll be his. It's like that just destroys all type of narrative element. I do believe that there is a narrative element to the games. I don't like the term storyteller. Bears using it. That's fine. I don't like the term because I think that goes too far, but that's just a personal preference. See, I said it for you, Bear. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, but I do think that there is a narrative element that's important, especially in a scene like that for the player characters. But that's... Um, you could have you a go. battle map. To remove any, any confusion. There you go. I can't see it. Dirty, filthy story gamer. <laughs> you can have a battle map uh, that has no hex grid on it. You draw it out. Bruce does it, and it works I out well. It. And I actually kind of like having a map that you draw out because, A, I can recycle and use it for another campaign, or B, it's now part of the world's history. It is a mapped out area that you can point to later on. And so if you get... Uh, uh, Instead of just getting, ooh, I have this book that has a bunch of maps. Okay, how can you use these maps? Well, I can use them in my story. It doesn't have to be a fixed point. Nothing has to be a fixed point if you're a DM. You just have to be a little bit more creative than the average bear. And if you're counting grids, if you uh, well, there's nothing average about you. There's nothing well, average about you. Nice. No, no, better than your average millennial bear, not Gen X bear. Aww. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's if you can have a map, it. okay. <laughs> if you can have a map that does not have the grid on it, does that make for your guys' opinion a better map? I'm sorry, say that again? 
if you can have a battle map that has yep. no grid on it, you have to get a tape measure out. And my nope. no, you uh, lost me I, at the tape my, measure. My, my answer well, that's, is literally yeah, that's, fuck and no. So yeah. you just have no, a like, hmm. like that's something I want to talk about. Like I thought we would talk about it in, in the following segment, but maybe probably. Not, but I, I Flexibility. We'll be doing flexibility and creativity next. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna hold uh, because I'm gonna maybe I should hold what I'm saying then. Well, jot, jot it did. down because so, honestly, I want to make sure that even if we don't have a specific topic for it or a specific question for it, you guys do get to say your points. So if if we don't get to say it by the time we get to segment four, please by all means, I would jot it down or something just in case. Just 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 what I wanted to say is like like sure. we talked a lot about about battle map and stuff like that, but like there's again like to use that term like you know that is associated with me now there's a spectrum right it's yeah. not like there's people are gonna use <laughs> people oh, are gonna use battle map without grid with tape measure and stuff like that which is like uh, a different level of like autism i guess <laughs> or people are gonna use if you want to really like the 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 or people are gonna use because the, the grid is already an abstraction right it's not realistic movement and stuff like that. We understand that people are going to use zone combat. That's a different thing as well. Right? Different, yep. You know, the free, the free league games love zone combat. So the Modifius games. Yeah. People so are just going to use like just to give like a general idea. But you know, yeah, it's about you know, be very wishy washy washy. Like maybe you do, Max, right? And uh, what? That's what you said. No, <laughs> that you, you, you use for general. Wish, 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 really cute. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Max. Because you, uh, you know you don't so, have a Canadian accent. So, 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 there, so there's like there's some like a gradient on the battle map use, right? Are you changing terms on us? No, uh, um, yes. here, here, here's for me. I'm gonna go backward in these chats. I got a because, the wrist. <laughs> By the way, no super chat. So if we don't hit the goal, we won't have a giveaway in segment five. Just to remind folks, there might be some. Actually, I think there are a bunch of new folks here. So one of the things that we do here is if we hit get a hundred dollars in super chats, we do a giveaway uh, at the at during segment five. So after the stuff that we, you'll never see on video, but uh, we do a giveaway. But this right here, this is me. Honestly, we have never played with miniatures. Well, okay, I've played with miniatures, but sometimes the Game Master did use a sheet of paper and draw an outline of the terrain and where everybody is for combat. I've done this on vinyl maps. I've done this on whiteboards. This is generally how I do it. One of the things I will do is if, if you insist on miniatures and you painted them, you've got a lot of miniatures, come on in. Bring your miniatures in. That can represent the player characters if you guys want to do it. I have standees. There you go. Now you can tell the player characters versus the uh, the NPCs because I've got standees that I'll put out there if necessary. But this is generally how I do it. People mentioned pogs earlier and, and uh, you know... We've used everything. I would just quickly draw it out. That's what it is. My issue specifically is with exact measurements. Now, that will go to Crafty's comment. But did you guys want to say anything about that before I hit Crafty's comment? No, I, I was saying, okay. like, like, from when I, when I started playing in, like, around 92, I think, like, I had the, the gym I was playing with, and was I was young and back then, right? It was all theater of the mind. And when I first joined a group that did miniature, and we, did, we didn't have internet back then, so we didn't have that, those kind of conversations available, and I was in north of Quebec, no magazine and stuff like that. So, you know, we're very much in a bubble. I joined a new group at some point that did play with mega with miniature. That was so weird to me. <laughs> but so there's that, right? A lot of it depends on how you started playing, I guess, too, right? Yeah, I, I actually started more on the war gamey side. Um but that has to do with satanic panic and playing more battle tech than any, you know, yada, yada. But, uh, you know, I'll just put this up here. Dirty Dwarf. Yeah, grids do make RPGs more war gaming, which some people like and some people do not. That's right. I, you know, look, I, I have my strong opinions about uh, the right way to play, and I have no issue saying that it is the right way to play. But to be fair, just because you play wrong doesn't mean you shouldn't play. It just means you need to get better, scrub. <laughs> I I my eyes. Uh, what? what? The, he, those guys do it all the time. Stop it. Why is it only me that's you're the problem? You're better than that. Oh. Oh, that's, oh wow. not, that hurt. That was an arrow to the heart, sir. <laughs> wow, Carl. Not, you know, us unprofessional DMs clearly have. <laughs> that's true. I got it from a pro. <laughs> yeah, I'm just an amateur. All right, let's. Uh, so, so uh, using the whole battle map thing, Crafty says, Legion with what if I'm using ranger beads? Well, I don't know what they are. That sounds very sexual, and I'm not sure I'm into that. But with that said, um, I'm guessing that they are something similar to Earth Dawn has a spell called Triangulate. 
and the triangulate spell actually you cast the spell you now know the exact distance between you and the target so yeah you take a little extra time to uh, cast triangulate or i'm guessing that's what these ranger beads do uh, <laughs> then i will give you exact measurements absolutely because you've earned it but I don't believe that in a fantasy game you come with range finders on you. Like, uh, he's 72.6 meters away, sir. So. As we make camp tonight, I quietly cast ranger beads on Connell's character. <laughs> Couple of them as like a lawnmower. Uh, yes, Walter that, that, Walter, that was the joke we were all making without being vulgar about it. But thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, thank you for hitting it like a hammer. Uh, let's see. I want to make sure. So. Yeah, let's uh, we'll do these as well. And I'm putting these up just so people aren't constantly uh, you know offended we're in a new world now. Yeah, Hyperborean uh, you're uh, oh Hyperborean I didn't catch the name. Look at that Hyperborean. Uh Hyperborea Hyper is actually my or, favorite oh, OSR Hyper game. I thought yeah. when you said Hyperbaron I'm like now that's actually funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Uh good old banter between men about stuff they care about is what the world actually lacks. Yes. And it's okay. It's okay to say you're wrong. No, you're wrong. Shut the hell up, and then hug each other, and then move on, and still do your way. Things you do your way. <laughs> no touching. Yeah. I mean, twenty tomorrow. bucks is twenty bucks. <laughs> All right. Uh, not your echo says. Uh, are you saying that that there's a Jerry Springer element to the show? We occasionally try to bring in elements of the old Friday Night Chill stream just to make sure that it's not boring. Yes. And by the way, uh, Mr. Max, you are not the father. <laughs> Wait, wasn't that? Uh, I thought that was the other guy, the uh, the dude who married the the Connie Chung. Um, yeah, it's the same shit. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. yeah, we wanted, we do want to keep it on target, and we don't want to waste a lot of time with this. But absolutely, absolutely, and to be fair. Bear believes what he said. I believe what I said, but we also don't hate each other for it. You know, we just <laughs> spurg out here a little bit to no. add some energy. And then uh, Crafty's right. Remember, Max and I have told each other to F. Yeah, I've straight up told him as as a moderator of my channel to go F himself on stream and we still get along. <laughs> so that's because you're both schizoid. Yeah, probably. So all right. Let's um let's talk about next we're gonna talk about flexibility and creativity. Uh just a reminder for folks from the super chats, remember hundred dollar super chats opens up a twenty or actually sorry, fifty dollar giveaway during segment five. Uh, I should probably say that stuff when I have this up. If you enjoy this discussion, please like this video. Subscribe to all of the panelist channels, even the illusory one that Connell has put out there that you can't see, but I'm sure you can find it somewhere where, yeah, somewhere outside the description. But the other guys are in the description. So hope to see you in the next video.